All right, folks, let me quickly, uh, let me quickly <laughs> update you on what is just the latest news we had on Ukraine. Why? Because this is precisely what was moving global markets today. And it may have the potential of giving us a hint, a hint of what tomorrow may look like. And that's why I said you need to know this, especially if you own stocks in the market right now look the futures because today was president day you know the market was closed the u.s market was closed but other markets in asia and in europe were opened look the FTSE was kind of flat but friday it was down big time and today the dax which is the german stock exchange slided i mean slid two percent the cac 40 this is the french market two percent and then you have all of these, you know, e other indexes for, for, for the European Union. So pretty much it's bad. Why? Because nobody wants to have a war. Nobody wants to have a war, especially at this specific time that we are battling with inflation and, you know, how to bring the economy back on track and f getting rid of this pandemic. So the futures are actually trading a little bit lower or like, you know, kind of in sync with what the U.S. market, the Europe market did you know, except maybe for oil and crypto. Crypto is also kind of flat, but given where it was sitting on Thursday, Friday, it was a little bit higher. I think Bitcoin was trading around 40, 40K and Ethereum around 2,900 or 3,000. Now, here is what is moving the market. Putin recognizes independence of separatist Ukraine regions in possible prelude, prelude to invasion. This is what Market Watch is just, you know, as published literally minutes ago, right? For, uh, uh, um, uh, 4 p.m. Eastern time, you can see here. Tech employers in Ukraine are preparing for the worst, including using crypto in lieu of cash. And then you have the U.S. warning UN, United Nations, that Russia is making lists of Ukrainians to kill or imprison if it invades. What you need to know about this, you know, latest move from Putin, it's about recognizing the separatist um, 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 region within Ukraine. Why? Because the thing is, um, this whole thing is literally a game. You know, it's a game about influence. It's a game about information. It's a game about, you know, how can I take advantage of what is happening in Ukraine? The whole thing is, you know, let me kind of, you know, step back a little bit and explain in, in simple language. The, the thing is, Ukraine was one of the key assets that Russia or President Putin wanted to use when it comes to building an influence against the U.S. And that's why Putin started being a good close friend with China, because China, if you are not my friend, I mean, if you are the friend of my enemy, how, how did they even say it? If you are the, the friend of my enemy of my friend, anyway, you get the point, right? You get the point. I'm a little bit confused here. But... China has U.S. as an economic enemy, all right? So um, if Russia is also an enemy of you know, the U.S. economy, then it means, hey, Russia and China can be friends because we have a common enemy. So that's what started happening in the last five or two to ten years. Now, the thing is, Ukraine doesn't want to be part of this whole scheme of Russia, you know, because they want to be part of NATO. NATO is another organization that is definitely and mainly influenced by the U.S. Mainly, meaning if the Ukraine goes to join you know, NATO, then definitely it means that um, they are going against Russia. So Russia doesn't want that to happen. And that's why he is playing games. He's playing games. But the thing is, those games are literally influencing the market because everybody is panicking is it going to be war is not going to be war the minute you hear about any slice of good news that can turn this thing into a no conflict then boom markets are reacting in the green but the second that news is no news anymore boom we get back to you know a red territory so based on this you know expect as we have the market kind of sliding today especially if i'm looking at how europe and even the futures here in the us you know uh close this session um it doesn't look good but keep in mind that any day that the market is closed and after hours you have less volume you know because Literally, nobody is here to buy the dip. Nobody is here to actually improve and increase liquidity in balancing 
any of these people that are freaking out and selling when the market is closed. All right. So I will see this. If you own any specific stock, you know, whether it's AMC, whether it's, you know, GameStop, the meme stock, or is the tech stocks or is the, you know, value stocks. Well, if you are in the long term, definitely this may be a good chance of averaging down. But if you are somebody just, you know, trading or swing trading, well, make sure you have some cash on hand in case it dips a little bit, then you can buy out, you know, and when it's rebound, because it's definitely going to rebound. I don't think nobody in this place coming from Europe or coming from the U.S. wants a war. U.S. has a lot to deal with in the U.S. territory. Inflation, you know, market crashing, um, unemployment, COVID, etc., etc. All right. So, just to say that, don't freak out in case this happens. Review what your, you know, key fundamentals are. Definitely, there are going to be some assets that may be more impacted than others. But again, depending on your strategy, depending on whether you are long term or short term, just make sure if it makes sense for you for the stocks that you hold to actually buy the dip and average down or even average up. You, you just never know. It's going to rebound definitely. Hopefully, if the summit happens, but um. That's just the way it is, folks.